All right, hey guys. So today what we're gonna do is we're going to learn how to use a um, spreadsheet program like Excel to actually make some titration curves, all right? And so the lovely background music is courtesy of my husband, Will. <laughs> He's in there playing the piano and I'm sitting here at the um, kitchen table, kind of late at night. So anyways, that's why there's music in the background, but I was enjoying it, so I decided to record while it was playing. All right, so first of all, to actually get to your Excel program, you'll have to log on through VMware, okay? So the normal Chromebooks don't have access to um, Excel inherently. So if you'll go to VMware and log on through your Madison City you know, school account, then you should be able to access Excel. Now on Google Sheets, you know, works for kind of simple, you know, graphs and things like that. But the one we want to do today is a little more complicated, which is why we need kind of a more powerful spreadsheet program like Excel. So once you get Excel pulled up, what you'll want to do is kind of create um, some columns with your data. Okay. And so I've got kind of two examples here. I've got apple juice and lemon juice. And... The way I've got them organized is I have the X values kind of on the left and the Y values on the right, okay? And the reason that's important is it because it kind of helps you see the X value was what you were controlling and the Y value was what was being measured as a result. So in our case of the titration, what we were controlling was the volume of base, that's what we would record, and the pH was being measured as a result. So you'll input kind of all of that data and kind of keep it separate for each fruit juice. If you want, kind of like I did, you can color code them using this little fill button here. It has lots of colors. Now one thing that you'll kind of need to be aware of is when you go to type in your um, volumes for the first time, you'll notice that Excel, let me do it over here, will sometimes push them back just to a whole number. However, for our volumes, we need to make them go out to two decimal places. That way their precision will match the precision of the tool you used, which was a burette. So if it ever does that where it takes away your decimal places, what you can do is highlight those cells. Then you'll look for this button right here that says increase decimal. And so in the description, show more decimal places for a more precise value. So you'll click it the number of times that you want a decimal place. And then you should be, you know, good to go where it will maintain that second decimal place. All right. So now on to the part about the graph. So what you'll do is you'll go to the insert tab and you'll look at the section that says charts. The kind of chart that we're interested in is a scatter plot. So you'll click the little drop down arrow. And there are two main options that we're going to use for titration curves. Either the scatter with smooth lines and markers or just the smooth line plot itself. So what let's do is let's start out with the smooth lines and markers, just so you can kind of get a feel of where the data points fall when we do the graph. So you'll click that one and you should be pulled up with kind of a blank chart area. And then what we need to do is actually add data to our chart. So at the top, it has a select data button. And what you're looking for is the add button. Okay, and it should pop up with a little box like this. It says series name, X value, and Y. So I'm going to start with apple juice. So I'll call it apple juice. Then with my data, I'll look for the X values, which were the volume. So what you'll do is you'll highlight all of the volume values that you had. Then you'll repeat that for the Y values, which are the pH. So kind of delete that little extra information there. And then highlight the pH values as well. Then you'll click OK. All right, when you're finished, you can click OK again. All right, and there you have it. There's kind of your titration curve for apple juice. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to add on a little bit to our graph. So what you're looking for is the green plus sign that says chart elements. The first thing we want to add is access titles and it'll pull up a little blank here where it gives you a spot to title the Y and the X axis. So if you'll just click that and kind of delete the title that's there, then you can title it appropriately as pH on the Y and then volume of NaOH on the X. 
Now it's important on your title to also include your unit. So we were measuring the volume in milliliters. All right. And then you can also, if you need to, kind of scoot it over to get it centered. I'm going to move that over. There you go. All right. So it's just a drag and drop. Okay. So we now have our, um, our axes nice and labeled. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the title because not only will I be plotting apple juice, but I also want to plot some of the other um, you know, juices on the same chart as well. So I'm going to call this titration of fruit juices. Now what I need to do to be able to distinguish between my apple juice line and my lemon juice line is I need to add a legend or a key. So if you look right here where it says legend, if you'll check that box, then it will automatically create a, um, I guess a key over to the side that shows you that the blue line is apple juice. Now the nice thing is, is if you'd like, you can, you know, kind of change the color of the line. So if I wanted to make it, you know, red, or I guess that's the fill box. Anyways, I think the Excel will take care, oh, here's the colors, yeah. So you can kind of change your color palette. What I've normally found helpful is to let Excel do the color changing itself because it does a good job, you know, kind of assigning colors. And I'll show you what that looks like when we add the lemon juice. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to re-click on the chart and we're going to go back to the select data button and add now our lemon juice data. So we'll title it lemon juice and again select all of the volume values for the X and then all of the pH values for the Y. Click OK. Click OK one more time. And now you can see that I have the lemon juice titration kind of on the same chart. And because I've already added a legend, it you know has nicely labeled it for me and I have different colors for each. All right. So let me move that one more time. I kind of am perfectionist about that. I like it to be, I like that label to be centered. All right. And so there I have my titration curve and I can kind of view a little bit about my equivalence point. All right. And so what I want to show you just the last time is um, how I can change this chart to be a little smoother where it doesn't have all the data points. So if you click on the chart and then go back to the tab that says chart design, if you click change chart type and we look at scatter plots, if we click just the smooth line, what it will do is kind of smooth out all those points so that I just see kind of the main line itself. Now what's neat is if you actually click on the line, you can still see the individual points and if you hover over them, you can get them to, you know, display, you know, what particular value they match with. All right. And so the last thing you'll do is you'll just add, you know, one more line for um, your last fruit juice. And then the chart will be ready where you can simply copy and paste it into your lab report. All right. So there you go. That's titration curve graphing with Excel.